Much like ARMS in Splatoon 2, Mario Tennis Aces has grown a lot since launch, but no one really seems to be talking about it. It launched as one of the most unique games in the series with a brilliant mix of arcade tennis and fighting game style management features. The gameplay was, and still is, extremely addictive, but the launch version also fell flat in a few key areas. The story mode was underwhelming, there were a lack of options and variety, and the game's competitive online mode only took place in one arena, the Ultra Smash Arena. Why? Aces has grown substantially since then, and as of patch 2.1, there's a ton of reasons to give the game another serve. So here are 7 reasons why Mario Tennis Aces is a better game. <laughs> Number 7. It's been balanced. I've sworn by Peach ever since the game launched, but some people felt Bowser Jr. was far too strong, and a lot of people only played as him online because of that. Well, with all these patches, all characters, not just Bowser Jr., have seen tremendous fixes. Your play style is still gonna vary depending on what kind of character you prefer, but I can't say any of them feel unfair or broken in the current build. So if you gave up due to being frustrated by a certain character, it might be worth poking in again, as things are a lot friendlier. <laughs> Number 6. Online works great. If your only experience with Aces was the network test, then you might not have the best impressions. It was plagued with games that would start off fine, but then get super laggy at random moments, and some matches were borderline unplayable. In the final build though, Aces plays like a dream, and it's only become more and more consistent with each patch. Every match recorded for this video was flawless, which is super important for a game like this, especially when you have to make frame-perfect counters. You can pretty much do anything online too, whether it be singles, or doubles, or playing with randoms, or playing with friends. And you can even play any court and free play mode, though tournament mode is only restricted to Marina Stadium. Actually, that's... Oh sorry, just a moment. That's... Really? The stadiums. All the stadiums? <laughs> okay, number 5. Better tournament mode. When I play Aces Online, I personally prefer to go for tournaments. There's a better sense of progression as you work your way to the top against competing players, and you feel a sense of reward as your rank goes up. The problem is, this mode had absolutely no variety at launch. The first four matches would take place in Marina Stadium during the day, with the finale being held at night. That's different now. In the first two matches, every single court can appear when playing in tournaments, though hazards are off. Think of it like playing Smash Brothers in For Glory mode. That's not all though, as tournaments have also been streamlined. They now only span three games, going from the first match, the semi-final, and the final. And the matches themselves have also been shortened. At launch, if you won a set and then your opponent wins a set, you would go on to a third round, and if you equalised on a fourth, it would then initiate a tiebreaker. Now though, if you both win a game, it's straight to the tiebreaker. No messing around with rounds. Some may not be all for the shortened rounds, but I think it gives the game a better sense of flow. Especially if you don't like the person you're up against. But there's a lot more surrounding tournaments. There are now doubles tournaments where you can match up with a local friend, an online friend, or a stranger and work your way through the rankings. There's also a Splatoon style grade ranking which will go up the more rounds that you win and go down the more that you lose. Your grade decides who you're paired with, so if you're a beginner then you'll likewise be matched with other beginners. So there's a lot to like about tournaments now, they've really improved a lot of things. <laughs> Number 4. New single player content. So yeah, the adventure was kind of a bummer. There were some cool moments, but for the most part it was an elaborate challenge mode that repeated itself far too often. But since launch, not only have there been fixes to adventure mode, but they've also added a few things. There's obvious fixes like a retry button, which, yeah, wasn't in the base game, and they've made small adjustments to difficulty across the board. You can even start a mission with complete zone energy if you fail it three times. But then there's also the brand new area, the Ruins of Trials. You'll recognise a lot of these challenges from other parts of the single player, but the challenge has been significantly ramped up. After finishing these four tricky challenges, it culminates in a boss rush, and completing that gets you a reward. <laughs> Number 3. The controls are more customisable. People had one major issue with the controls, and it's that darn X button. So X is the lob, but double tapping X also performs a trick shot. Simple, right? Well, sometimes involuntarily you'll accidentally press X twice in the heat of a moment, causing you to flip away from a ball that's right next to you. Well, you can now disable X from performing trick shots entirely, meaning you only need to rely on the right stick. You can even toggle zone speed and zone shot to be on two different buttons, which I really like. <laughs> Number 2. Limited Time Co-op Challenges so playing standard games of tennis is all well and good, but every now and then Nintendo adds an entirely new temporary online mode to the game. Back in September, we had an online swing mode challenge where you play as a team to hit as many boos as possible, and starting from this month, the challenge uses traditional controls and requires you to work together with players on both sides of the court to get as many rings as possible. 
The Boo one would give you cosmetic rewards for Boo, and the new one gives you different coloured Yoshis. We don't know quite how long Nintendo will keep adding co-op challenges, but they're always the incentive for me to get back into the game. The core of Mario Tennis Aces is so fun, and sometimes you just need a unique incentive like this to remind you of that. Now let's get a Chain Chomp challenge so this good boy can have a hat. And number one, there are so many characters. Aces launched with a pretty respectable roster. I mean, after all, it had Chain Chomp, but they've been adding a character every single month, and in the case of this month, they added two. There are currently 23 characters in this game, and Boom Boom, Luma, and Pauline are being added next year. To put that in perspective, Ultra Smash had 16 characters, and some of them aren't even in Aces yet, like the Sprixie Fairy and Dry Bones Bowser. There's still a lot of character material for future updates. And hey, Nintendo, we have Diddy Kong now. Where's Funky Kong? <laughs> and those are the seven key upgrades made to Mario Tennis Aces since launch. If you fell off the game, have these convinced you to pick it back up, or is there still something missing for you? Mario Tennis Aces released as a really fun game, and back in June, we gave it a light a lot, and now, it's only gotten better and better. So what do you guys think of these upgrades? Let us know in the comments below, and of course be sure to subscribe to Game Explain for a lot more on Mario Tennis Aces, and other things gaming too. Until next time, bye.